Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, as I said, my name's Kay, Kay Ojo, Operations Director here at Hydra. And I've got Jonathan Banks, who is our BI technical lead, uh, but some of you may know him as, as one of the guys who works on the support desk. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, please put them through on the chat window, um, and we'll try and sort any issues out for you as we go through this session. So, in terms of the structure for the session, we've got about 45 minutes. Uh, we've got about 30 minutes that we'll, we'll use for the actual content, and then about 15 minutes for any questions at the end. Um, hopefully, that will be enough to get through anything that we have that we have through the session. If there's any questions that we don't get answered, then we'll get through to you directly through one of the account managers or through myself personally. Okay. In terms of the agenda for the session, we've got quite a lot to uh, run through today. Uh, some really exciting stuff. Uh, the development guys have been. Uh, very, very busy over the last few months, and we've got some exciting stuff to show you over the next uh, 30 minutes. First of all, we've got the 2015 release, uh, which some of you have already been aware of. We've talked to you about it. We've also got the Hydra web platform that I'll be talking through as well, our new browser-based uh, application. We've also got the mobile app, which is a, an exciting new venture for us uh, as an organization, which I'll talk through as well. And finally, the Hydra BI platform, our business intelligent, intelligent uh, platform for data reporting. So I'll run through all of those for you. So uh, straight into it, if you remember uh, back in the back end of 2013 towards early 2014, we talked about what our key drivers are for the product strategy going forward. And there were three things that we talked about. Uh, ease of use, trying to make the platform as easy for you to use as possible, and also making sure that you've got better access to the key business data that you have inside the application, and finally tools and services for faster adoption. Now the first two that I talked about there, we've really, really gone to town on those over the last few months, and hopefully you see that in the release, and also the ones of you that are already using them, you'll already be getting some benefit from the interim releases that we've provided. Okay. Um, since this la that, la that last release of 2013, there's some work that's gone in there. Uh, that has actually helped us realize some of the vision that we put forward um, for you in the 2013 user forum that we had. Okay, One of the key areas that we talked about um, with some of you as customers was around performance and scalability. So this is around trying to make sure that the product, um, Hydra RM product, is actually suitable for future for the future in terms of scale so as you guys grow your organization add more users in add more plans into there more processes more complex usage all that kind of stuff that most organizations go through as they grow so one of the things that I thought I'd share with you which is um, a little bit difficult to show in terms of a demonstration but um, we've got some data there which is showing you performance and scalability improvement that we put into into the product over the last few months now um, just to put a bit of context into it, what we've actually used there is actually customer databases, so not just um, demonstration data. We've actually used a number of your databases, obviously talking to you about it. And this is a result and culmination of all that work. Uh, you see there that the main area that a lot of you will get value from is around you know, saving plans and publishing plans. We put some significant performance improvements in there to try and make sure that from an ease of use point of view, um, one of the, the concerns we had was how users had to wait uh, quite a bit for plans to publish uh, and for them to get the information through to the end users who are actually doing the work. And we put some 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 work in there to try and make that what to make that better. Um, some users have already got interim releases that have actually had these improvements as part of that interim release, and they've already seen significant benefits from that performance improvement. And uh, we can very quickly show you that by actually, you know, demonstrating your data in it, um, which is something that we can do as part of the engagement following this session. Okay. Most of you will also remember, uh, as part of the 2014 release, that we talked about, you know, the UI being easy to use uh, and things like that. Well, 2015 carries that forward. Okay. So we get a lot more uh, information from the tool. It's a lot more easy to use. Uh, the UI is a lot fresher. Uh, which I'm going to go through straight away now, if you just bear with me. Um, and you'll see that what we try to do is actually make sure that you know, the application from a, a simplicity point of view really comes out. Okay. So uh, the first thing that you notice uh, for the ones that haven't seen it, I know some of you already got the interim release that has this UI change inside it. Um, you will see that obviously the, the, the information is very, very clear to see. The ribbon bar is one of the major improvements that we put in there. And the main reason for that was that we had a lot of users asking us for features that were actually already in the product, but they just couldn't get to it because there were too many menu structures inside the application. So we've used, you know, industry uh, 
knowledge that we've really got that all other applications just such as Microsoft Office are already using and we've actually put those into the application to get access to certain key features so you notice that depending on where you are in the application the, the information in the ribbon bar changes accordingly to give that context sensitive um, feedback that you need so that you're not constantly looking for menu items in the application okay so a couple of things just to point out very very quickly I'm just whizzing through this because I know some of you have already seen this but you've got things like the quick access toolbar so if you know there are certain features that you use a lot you can add them into there quickly so that it means that you know again from an ease of use point of view that your efficiencies start to get uh, much more visible to yourself okay you've also got access to the back, back uh, backstage which lets you get to uh, the simple things that you would do in any uh, Windows uh, Office application okay and finally, the access to the views. I know a lot of you use the views. Um, we've actually moved those into a, a central area just to make sure you can get, that, get to them very, very quickly and also the custom views as well. Uh, but like I said, some of you already got this so you can see, see that very, very quickly. Okay. And this is to try and accomplish the goal of making features more discoverable so that you, know, you can work more faster and you, they're easier to get to, uh, which sound you know, awfully obvious, but when you're using an application that's so feature-rich, it's important that you, know, you don't spend time looking for certain things in the application, but that you know, it's easy to get to. Okay? Moving forward then, I'm just going to quickly talk through the um, Hydra Web application. Okay, Now, some of you will already have web timesheets, um, as it was previously called. Well, what we've done with Hydra Web is to consolidate some of the um, features that we've already got in the application. So this is Hydra Web that you can now see on the screen. Hopefully, you can all see it. Um, and what we've done here is to basically consolidate the timesheets, reporter, and also the dashboard, the Hydra BI, which I'll come to later, uh, and the alerts into a web platform. Now, there's a huge reason for this from, our, from us as an organization. One of the feedback that we've got repeatedly from uh, a lot of our users was around accessibility and also from um, the burden of the upgrades, for example. The fact that you know having a, win a Windows client application for every single user uh, provides quite a, a wide footprint uh, for the application, so by deploying uh, you know the Hydra Web application, you reduce that footprint to a very small amount, which is literally just a browser um, that the users always have access to as upgrades are done. They don't need to upgrade anything on their own client PCs. Uh, ad admittedly, the, the the main application will always be required for the guys that are doing project management and resource management and things like that. Um, but obviously, we're, we're looking to do more with that and web platform going forward, which we'll come to later when we do um, the, the user forum for later in the year. Okay, so with, 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 with this, what you've got here is, is you know, like I said, a browser-based application that means that um, you can get to it pretty much with any browser that, that, that works um, with most applications. Okay, now I'm just going to focus very quickly on the timesheet, which is what you can see there, which is a, a huge step forward for us uh, as an organization to be able to deploy this. Now, some of you will be used to the Hydra Personal and also the web timesheet, which is uh, the, the timesheet application that we had, which had quite a lot of features inside it. Um, and some of which we've taken out to try and simplify this user interface. Now, over time, some of those features um, may become useful. They need to be brought forward into this platform. But the, the main focus of this release is to try and make the web, the, the timesheet entry process, as simple as possible for the end users to ensure that there's little uh, delay in getting data into the system so that the stakeholders, senior stakeholders, can get data out of the system from a reporting point of view. Okay, so I'll just quickly talk through what you've got here on the screen. So on the left-hand side here, what you've got is your typical task list, structured by different plans. Uh, you can add new tasks if you want to, and you've got the main area where you're entering your time. Also, you've got the fact that you can enter comments against the tasks, um, or you can enter comments against individual entries of time against the task. Um, now, this is obviously something that's obviously for the end users is quite useful when they know that there's certain things that aren't quite done uh, on the task, for example. Okay. You also get uh, a very nice feature here, which puts in information about what's been planned. So you see that um, on the, below each task entry area, there's a, a P colon effort, if you like, which is telling you what was originally planned for that task. You don't have to have that, so that's a, a switch that you can have on or off to show you what was planned um, for that task, if you want that to be displayed for the end user or not. Okay. Um, and then you've got the fact that you can move around depending on where you are. You can also have a day view, 
which will show you just a day view of the plan of the of your task plan. You can go backwards and forwards as you as you see fit. Okay, um, and this is trying again make it as easy as possible for the person that's entering time, so that there's no delay in them entering the time to then submit it for approval. Okay, um, and this takes me nicely on into the mobile app. So again picking up the theme of trying to make the application as straightforward as possible and as easy to use as possible. One of the feedbacks, or the other feedback that we got quite a lot of was around trying to come up with uh, a mobile app, a mechanism for users who are either on the road or not always at their desk or just want something simpler than having to fire up their PC every single time they need to en enter their time. Um, and obviously because we've got um, as part of our, our suite of products, we've got an um, Hydra PSA, which already has a mobile app. So we've already obviously leveraged that technology and how that's all built to bring to market for the Hydra RM users a mobile application, um, which I'm just going to bring up just now, if you bear with me. Now, I'm running this in what is effectively an iPhone 6 emulator. So effectively what you're seeing here is exactly the same information that's in the Hydra web platform in terms of time date, time sheet data, um, but displaying obviously in a much, much um, slimmer view. So it's a responsive application that runs on pretty much any device out there. Um, if there's any device that doesn't run, we can obviously try and get hold of those and test them against that just to make sure that it works for you. But this works across quite a number of devices um, and the idea is to try and make sure that users can get access to it external to your organization. So we work with your IT department to make sure that that all works. And we've got a document that describes how that should, be all, should all be set up. Um, and this is, this is a significant step forward towards trying to push RM into much more of a, a web-based or browser-based uh, setup to try and re reduce, A, the, the footprint for users and also increase um, the, the, the usage, if you like, the adoption of the tool because it's so much more accessible for them to enter their time into it. Again, you see that in the mobile application, you've got a similar type of views, list of tasks by plan, and you can enter enter time uh, into here using the same kind of mechanism. So you can enter time into here, save, and you can also enter comments, and you can see the planned effort as well if you want to show that as well. There's then a timesheet view that lets you select which time you want to submit. So you highlight which one you want to submit, you submit it, and it's exactly the same process as you see inside Hydro Web with the timesheets in here behind in the background. Okay, um, and just to point out as well, so the, the mechanism that's actually allowing us to deploy um, the Hydro Web mobile platform is exactly the same as what's behind here. So in terms of technology, uh, if you have Hydro Web and Web timesheets, the mobile app is literally just another module that comes with the suite. So there's no need to do any configuration specifically for the mobile other than setting up the access for the users external uh, to your organization if you so wish for that to happen. Okay. Okay, now I appreciate that I rattled through quite a few of those things in there. I'm trying to make sure that we get through to the questions as quickly as possible. Um, but just to quickly point out as well that, you know, you get exactly what you had before in terms of web uh, application, you've got the reporter, the dashboards, and also the alerts, um, and all that information is exactly as was in your existing release. So the any upgrade path would give you what you had uh, before as well. Okay. So the third and final uh, addition to the um, suite is the Hydra BI. So the dashboard, which I talked about earlier on. Um, I'm just going to log out so I can log in as the admin to see this. Okay, so this is the business intelligence platform that comes with the 2015 upgrade. Now, again, this is another huge step forward for us as an organization because going back to the, the strategy point that I mentioned earlier in terms of where we're trying to push the product in terms of making sure that we allow you to get the data that you need out of the tool in as easy a form as possible um, and also make sure that it's enabling adoption to move forward as quickly as possible. This is, you know, a huge step in terms of that strategy point. It's browser-based. It runs inside the Hydra web platform. Um, it is a separate module 
but it's you know it's, it's deployed as, as one during the configuration process as part as part of the upgrade but it gives you a, a significant step forward in terms of data access so um, from the point of view of anyone in the organization being able to get access to that data now before I hand over to John to talk through what's in here I'm just quickly going to show you uh, a, a quick slide deck that tries to emphasize um, the point that we're making about the Hydra BI application. Now, this the slide that you can see there is a, a typical data hierarchy for any organization. And um, one of the lessons that we've learned over the, the years that we've been working with Hydra is, is how important the data is from a hierarchy point of view. It has to build up to some uh, some, some, some higher point. And the, the reason why things like the Hydra web and the mobile app are so crucial to getting you value out of the things like the Hydra BI or any reporting platform that you might deploy is that connection, that hierarchy, the data has got to build up from somewhere, thereby allowing you to get to the detail if you want to or just have confidence in the high level of data that you're looking at. So you look at you know the, the hierarchy that you've got the resource and information, so the resource skills, cost, charge out rate, tasks, effort, at that lower level, all that information builds up to you know the project information, the portfolio information, uh, and then you know if you have any high levels of, of structures, all that stuff rolls up and the consolidation becomes less of a of a manual effort. It's all automated provided um, the data gets entered into Hydra in the correct format. Okay, now I'm just going to hand over to John, and he's going to spend some time talking you through um, what is the Hydra BI uh, application. So just very much, just give him access to this. To you, John. Perfect. Thanks, Kay. Okay, so this is the, the dashboard tool that Kay's been talking about over the last 10 minutes. This is a, a new bit of technology that we have implemented into Hydra Web that allows us to build on what we put in place with the Crystal Engine, but offers a lot more interactivity from a user's perspective and also gives us a lot more flexibility in what we can do with the data that's underneath. As most of you will be aware, Crystal is uh, quite rigid in what you can do with it. This is almost the opposite in that anything you can do it is possible as long as you can dream it up. So out of the box, there's three key areas. Information about projects that are going on, information about the people that are in your system, and information about the timesheets that people are submitting. So each of these tabs across the top allows you to create a dashboard, if you like. And the dashboard just consists of charts and tables and that kind of thing. I'll just quick, click through all of these so that we load them up so when we come back to them they're a bit faster to see. But you can see there's a range of information that we're looking at. All of the things that we often get asked questions about, who's missing timesheets, who submitted them and they haven't been accepted, who's the biggest culprit. The dashboard will show you that very quickly and you can go from the very top level down to the actual source of the problem with just a couple of clicks. So if we concentrate on this area, this is the project dashboard. So although it looks like there's actually not much on the screen, it's because of the way that you can contain the data, it means we don't have to show very much and the details all behind the scenes with just a click of a button. So if we take the bottom right hand segment, this chart is showing us what the actual versus target cost is per portfolio or what you might know as a project register. So we can see here that the IT portfolio, there's a discrepancy, it's gone over budget by quite a bit. Now if we want to take a closer look at this, we can just click on any item on the chart and this will then drill down and show us the contents of that project register. So now you can see that we've got a breakdown of all of the projects that live inside the register that we clicked on. And we can then see the discrepancies between these two. And we can go down to another level. So the one that makes sense to click on, external systems, there is a discrepancy there. Again, that one's gone over budget. So again, if we click on one of the bars, it will take us down again. So now we're looking at the tasks 
contained within that project, within that project register. So we're three layers deep, but we're getting to the source of the problems. So you can see really everything is going to plan apart from two items. This one, we haven't set a baseline, so there's no target, so we don't know how we're doing on this one. So we'll ignore that one for now. But the top one, we can see that there is a baseline for our target, and we've exceeded it. If I click on this again, I can actually get much more information out of it. And you can add to this as you see fit. Now, we're just concentrating on costs at this point. But at this point, I can see who's doing it, which planet lives in, what the total cost is, what the target cost was, what that difference is, and what that difference is as a percentage to target. So the 7% over budget of seven and a half grand. So I can go from the very top level right down to the very root cause with three or four clicks. And the data you see along that path is entirely your choice. So if I come back out of this, you can also do other nice and easy things. So each of these little points represents a point in time the data was being measured. So you can see here that this was November 2011, and there was a variance of all of the projects in Hydra of 57%. So that was a big change. Something obviously has happened. But I can drag this point and apply it to any of my charts, and it will filter that chart by that point in time. So if I drag November 2011, and let's drag it down onto this chart, this chart here actually. I've now said to this chart, show me what the variance was in November 2011, and break it down by project register. And I can see here then that actually, the IT portfolio was the one that was massively over budget. And again, if I click into this, I can keep going down into the detail. So I can see here that there's a few projects within here that are giving me a bit of a headache. The ones in red are the ones that I should concentrate on. Specifically, the network upgrade, 67% variance to budget. Again, if I click on this, I get taken down to the detail level so I can see Right, this is the one that we need to concentrate on. He's massively over budget. The other guys we can leave alone, which means that we can get right to the cause very fast, deal with it, and move on. So the data in Hydra is absolutely critical to progressing the business forward and making sure that everything's on track. Now, another thing that's very nice in this tool is the ability to change the chart very, very quickly. So if I just bring everything back to home, just because it looks better. What I'm going to change now is this line chart. I don't want to represent it with a line. I want to represent it with a bar. So I'm going to quickly change that. I'm going to go into the editor. So this is the editor. This is where you construct your charts. And you can see on the left-hand side, we've got a little drop-down. It tells us, right, these are the things that are available to you. And I simply drag the item I want. I drop it onto the chart. Am I happy with that? Yeah, I think I am, so I'll save that. That was nice and simple. You can add as many additional charts to this as you wish. It doesn't have to just look like this. So I'm going to add another chart. I'm going to chop this quadrant in half, and I'm going to do it vertically. Now I've got a little bit of free space there. So if I now click on my spanner, I go to my library. And that's the tab that I'm in here. I'm just going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to add this, resource costs, which is a table. I'm just going to drag it on, drop it on. Nice and simple. And you can keep building on that. If I was to chop it again, let's say I wanted to add another chart. I'm going to chop this one horizontal this time. And you can see how everything resizes. Now, it doesn't look very pretty, that, so I'd probably best get rid of this one. So if I take it away, it re-expands into the space. Along the top of the dashboard, or the, the tab, if you like, is a, a parameter control, which allows us to filter every item on the dashboard by what we choose in here. So rather than it being a little bit more dynamic and it's filtering it based on where I click on the screen, I can essentially hardwire it to only show me 
information about the IT portfolio. And that will update all of the charts now. And then I can go down another level and say, actually, I only want to see things about the network upgrade project. Now, these work independent of each other as well. So you could just pick the network upgrade project if you wish without having to first pick this one, which, again, is a big departure from the way that you'll be used to reporting from Hydra, where everything's hierarchical. In here, we're not that fussed. It's a lot more fluid. I'll just get rid of these. I'll reset it all back to the start. If I just click onto the timesheet, well, actually, I'll just click through these just to show you what we've got. So cost, cost information, effort. You can imagine what this is going to show you. Effort-based information, and the principles are the same. I can click on the charts. It will show me more information. I can look at a profile of where we're doing, so we can see that we thought we were going to do lots of effort back in October, and actually back in 2011 as a whole. Actually, it all happened in 2013, so a two-year difference. If I go to issues, information about any issues that are being recorded against my projects, I can see how they're broken down into the various categories and priorities. If I click on my risks, the same story. You can break it down by all of the categories. The severity, sorry, probability. I've got further information underneath about what exactly is going on. Milestone information. This is a tabular view of all of the milestones recorded against the projects, whether it's a key one. And then there's just a brief bit of information. Now, the beauty of this is that you can expand on this. And I know a lot of you are quite heavy users of the project properties. And it's relatively straightforward to add these into here. Now, we can't do it out of the box because we don't know what you're going to call them. But you can do it post-event, and it's very, very quick. So you can really very quickly build up a custom dashboard that shows you the kind of data you're interested in without too much effort. Now, I'll just skip over to the timesheet one. Again, we all follow the same format, very high level. You can drill down to see the details. So we can see here, we have a big problem with missing timesheets. If I click on the missing timesheet quadrant, it's now broken it down to tell me these are the plans that have the missing timesheets. So the biggest is at the bottom, if you solve that one. The resource pool has the biggest problem. So if I click on this one, OK? Now, as it happens, every person has the same number of missing timesheets. But the data is not important. What's more important is the way that you get to this. So we can see here, Andy has got three. Ian's got three. Now, if I actually click on Andy, now I can see which timesheets Andy's got missing. And I can see when they're for, which allows me to then either go and chase Andy up for these ones in particular, or actually go into Hydra itself and deal with it and solve it very quickly. And that helps maintain that data integrity that we're, in, we're after, because as most of you will know, timesheets due on a Friday, they're not typically filled in until Monday morning, possibly Tuesday morning at the latest. So technically, your reports for the previous week are not up to date until Wednesday because of that snapshot. So the faster those timesheets can get in and get dealt with, the more accurate your reports are going to be, and the sooner they're going to be accurate as well. Just another thing, I, just, I can't really demonstrate this, but these, all of these charts allow you to embed their data in another application. And by that, I mean if you have an intranet site, you could theoretically embed this chart in it, and if all of your staff have access to that chart, all of them will be able to see who's the worst culprit for missing timesheets. Or similarly, if that SharePoint site is restricted to the senior guys, they'll be able to see where they need to be paying attention rather than wasting time with the people that are getting on with it. So you can embed these. That's called anonymous charting. And that allows you to have the dashboard sat behind the scenes serving up the information, but actually the report or the chart, sorry, itself is displayed in another medium somewhere else of your own decision. It could be your own application. It could be a SharePoint site. It could be an intranet site. But the capability is there. Another nice touch is the ability to actually get the data out of this into Excel relatively fast. So the little spanner icon, that's, that's the key to it all. But you can see here that I've got, I can view the chart data. 
And that gives me a table when it loads. Is that loaded? Let's try this on a different one. This one. Okay, so we want this. We just want the data because we're going to mess around with it in Excel. So now I've got the data here. I can then copy the data. Copy the data to the clipboard. I haven't got Excel on this machine, but that would allow me then to pop that information into Excel where I could further manipulate it perhaps. Maybe I need to attach this bit of information alongside other bits of information, or perhaps I just need to distribute it on a piece of paper rather than in the browser like it is here. You can also print direct, you can email direct as well. Now when you email, it doesn't email the dashboard, it emails the chart. So if you want to email the entire dashboard, you'd have to email them individually or, or take a screenshot or redirect them to the site. So it's got that built in, so you can just tell it who it's going to go to, what it's about, a brief, brief bit of information about what you're going to show them, and then you can send it off and they'll receive that. Finally, another nice feature of this is it doesn't have to look at Hydra information. The configuration tab, which I won't show you, but it's just basically boring database details, allows you to plug the dashboard into multiple data sources, and each chart can have its own data source. So that gives you the capability to have a kind of pseudo integration because you can share data from several databases on one screen very, very quickly. And if those data sources all happen to share a common name, let's say it's the project name, or even an, a, a property that you've defined, perhaps it might be invoice ID or something like this, the tool itself is clever enough to, to match them up as long as they're called the same thing, so that if you were to filter on that, Let's say you change the uh, the invoice name in a drop-down list at the top, like we've got this project name. All of your data sources would reflect that change wherever they're getting their data from, as long as that field is common to all of the databases. So that allows you to drag data in from the various bits and pieces that you've got all over your business, but look at them combined to give you a much more rounded view of what exactly is going on. Okay, back to you, Kay. Thank you very much, everyone. Great, thanks for that, John. Uh, really good, thank you. Uh, amazing, I really like this tool. I mean, we I use it internally for the operations team, so I have a dashboard that's set up for all, all the projects that we're running, and it's really amazing because the, the, sim the simplicity of it is what um, it really, really works because it means that you don't have to spend too much time in the detail of how to set up the data. You get the techie guys to work on that, but then all of a sudden all your stakeholders can effectively uh, self-service charts, self-service dashboards and do what works best for them. Um, and as, as I like to think about it, it's you need to be able to, you know, there are certain key reports that you, you need as an organization and you know what those are, but there are certain times that you don't know what the problem is and you just need to fish around a little bit in the data and, and look for anomalies, look for red flags, look for things that are not quite right and then start to try and get to the bottom of them. And the whole idea of being able to interact with the actual chart and drag data from one to the other, uh, I think is absolutely amazing. Okay. Um, so that sort of brings us to the end of the demonstration. I'm just going to check to see if we've got any questions coming through or just bear with me. Okay, we've got a few coming in. Uh, what do you have? Okay, so one of the questions uh, coming through is, if I just go back to the timesheet, was why did we have Ian and Alan in this timesheet? So the Ian and Alan is basically the, the two different plans that Amy, the person who's logged in in the timesheets, has got tasks from. So Amy has tasks from both Ian and Alan's plan. That's why um, she's got tasks in, both, in, in, in that view from both plans. Okay, um, and the next question is, is is timesheet compliance info based on snapshot or live data? Uh, it's based on the time on the snapshot. Um, I'll have to defer to Banks to answer that probably in a bit more detail uh, with you, Colin, uh, in terms of which one exact data you're talking about there. But my understanding is it is based on the snapshot data. Okay, okay. do you want me to answer that one, Kay? Yeah. 
it's not based off snaps information. It's based off of live information. However, I'll caveat that with, in order to get the most up-to-date information, there is a, a procedure that needs to run in the database to collate it together. And that determines how up-to-date the table is that runs all the timesheet information. So there's nothing stopping you setting that to run every 10 minutes. But what you need to bear in mind is, how long is it going to take to run? Because if it's never completing before you start another one, it's not really effective. So there has to be a delay because we need to stitch the data together in order to say this is a, a true representation. Now, it's not on the snapshot data, which means that you'd only get it once a day. It's pr purely based off of this, this database procedure that runs behind the scenes. And that can run a, a lot more frequently than the snapshot. Um. And can anyone in the organization have access to the, to the BI tool? Yes. So as long as security is set up right, um, then so they can see what they're allowed to see, for example, then yes, anyone can get access to it, uh, depending on how you do the licensing for them. Okay. Um, I'll just add to that, Kay. Yeah. Any of the objects that are seen on the screen, any chart, you can determine which user can see that. You can also determine which users see which tab, which contains your chart. So you can create your own security structure in the, the dashboard to say person X can only see tabs X, Y, and Z, and then you could say person Y can see tabs A, B, and C. So you can control what people can see purely in the, the BI dashboard itself. So if you don't want people to look at sensitive information, well, you can block them from ever getting access to it, and they can't go in and accidentally add it either because you can lock it down at the individual chart level so that they would never even be aware that it exists. Someone's asking if the mobile if the mobile app, are you hosting this somewhere for them to access or how will they access it back into the server? So is it not something that we will um, host? The the way that it's set up and the way that it's built, obviously leveraging the, the technology that we've got with Hydra PSA, is that it will be hosted on your own servers and depends on how accessible you want it to be to external users. We have a, a document that outlines exactly how all that works um, and it is fairly common technology. There's, there's nothing um, nothing to, to, to get overly concerned about with that as far as that goes. Okay, someone's asking about the BI, the BI and other systems. So when, when you say you can integrate with Hydra BI with other systems, is there any limitation to this? Um, obviously, it depends on the system in question, uh, but as, as Jonathan said earlier on, so long as there's, there's, there's a, the ability to get to the data and get it out into the Hydra BI application, then we can, then we can link it into or your existing hydro data and give you something more meaningful. Or you can simply report information from that other system in isolation. It doesn't have to link into hydro data. You can simply use it as just another BI tool sitting over other applications. Uh, but obviously it comes through, through ourselves as hydro BI.